Look, a couple of hours might be all the start Orlando needs. What makes you think he's going to move that fast? Giovanni makes me think so. He tried to knock us out too quickly. If he had time, he'd have waited for a better chance. We missed the police by inches and made the Hotel Vittoria just long enough to put our baggage in a room. If we were right about Orlando's move, there was no time for sleeping. We knew he'd be living on the grand scale, so just before dawn, we hit the best of the produce markets and started to ask questions. Curto found an old man who knew all the answers. Hey, he's Senor Orlando. He's a buy from me all the time. He's a big man. Yeah, yeah. Real big success, we know. You know where his house is? Sure, I deliver. Deliver everything. I got the surplus. The Jeep I buy from Stata Unito. It's your country. Where's Orlando's place? Uh, the, the Palazzo. Uh, uh, you know where's the church? Which church? Uh, Santo Spirito. Uh, south of the city near Monte Pellegrino. See, si, see, si, there's the one. Orlando, he's living in the palazzo. It's a big white palazzo after you pass the church. I, uh, why you ask about him? You you know him from someplace? Yes, yes, we know him. We looked him up once back in the United States. Huh? Yeah, for six years we looked him up. Hey, hey you want to ride with me? I, I'm going to go by the Orlando's palazzo. What do you say, George? Well, side curtains on this Jeep, and it's something Orlando must be used to seeing. Better than driving past the place in the hired car. Hey, you gonna come? Yeah, grazie. We, uh, yeah, we will come. Si, andiamo. You make deliveries this early in the morning? Oh, no, no. I just take a stuff to my store. Oh. I deliver uh, later in the daytime. Uh, how long since you seen uh, Signor Orlando, eh? A long time. Uh, back in the Stata Unito. That's right, that's right. You don't see him since the accident, huh? What accident? Oh, with the automobile. He's uh, got accident. When was this? Oh, on a door, uh, two months ago. Oh, he hurt badly? No, I don't think so. Only his face. I, I see him walk around all with a bandage on the face. The first time I see him without the bandage, I don't know who was the same man. He, he's got no mark on the face. He's no scar, you know? He just look like different man. That sounds like a plastic surgery job, Credo. That's what it sounds like, all right. It was bad enough when we knew what he looked like. What do you say? What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing. Just just a little problem we've got here. The new face isn't going to hurt his chances any when he tries to make you sneak. We've got to know what he looks like now. Hmm. If you want to see him, you go in the afternoon, after lunch time. He's a sitting garden by the palazzo. You'll have to pick up a camera someplace. Fine. How do we get near him with it? Well, there's a top pollen on the back of the Jeep. We can throw it over a couple of crates, hide under it, shoot a picture without being seen. We hope. Hope or not, we've got to get that picture. It took a while before the old man agreed to help us. He didn't understand what we wanted or why we wanted it, and, of course, we couldn't tell him. Curto told him something in Italian that seemed to pave the way, and shortly afternoon of the same day, we were under a tarpaulin on the rear of the jeep when it stopped near the white palazzo. There's nobody in the garden, George. Thought the old man said Orlando was always there in the afternoon. Well, he's wrong today. Curto, we're too late. Too late? Throw the tarpaulin off. <coughs> How do you know we're too late? What do you see? Uh, the house door is padlocked from the outside. And the sneak is on, and we've lost it. We've got to stop him. George, you might be headed for any port in Europe by plane or ship. Which way do we go? First, we've got to get into that house. Come on. You think he might have left something behind? Something that might tell where he's headed? If he didn't, we're finished. He could land at any one of a thousand points in the United States. He's been planning this for a long time. into the house, went through papers and files, desk drawers and closets. It looked like a hopeless case. And then we came across something. George, hold it. Find something? Maybe. Here, take a look at this. A waste paper basket. A copy of a cablegram. Misspelled a couple of words and crossed them out and wrote them correctly. Must have decided to make a whole new copy before I sent it. Dated yesterday. Yeah, it's a funny message, though. Uh, uh, meet me with Emerson when you get the word. Remember, Emerson. Monaghan won't do. No signature. He wouldn't send a cable to the States, not this kind. Who's it addressed to? Can you make it out? No, no, it's been blurred. Emerson or Monaghan. Could be code names, of course. Or they just might be real. Some contact he expects help from. Attorney, maybe. Somebody like that. Well, it could be anything. If that cable ever went through, 
The cable office should have a copy on file. We can get the addressee from them. Come on. Well, if they've got it, we better place a transatlantic call to the chief in Washington. That's exactly what I had in mind. He can check on the man who got that cable, and maybe there'll be something in the files on somebody in the rackets named Emerson or Monaghan. Mm. We'll have to get back to the States ourselves on the next plane. Whatever plugging we can do now, we'll have to do at the home end. I just had an idea. What's that? One thing Orlando will need is a clear passport. He probably took Giovanni's and altered it. But I doubt if he'll try to use it to enter the States. He's got something better than that up his sleeve. Maybe a passport stolen or... Or bought from some American stranded over here, Pat. Wonder what the chief is going to say when he finds out that Orlando slipped through our hands. He'll say what he always says. Find him. <laughs> Cable had gone through all right. We got the address, a place in New York, and forwarded the information to headquarters. Then we boarded a plane for home. The chief met us when we came in at Idlewild Airport. Well, the address on that cable was phony. You mean it was never delivered? Oh, it was delivered all right, but there's a vacant lot at the address. Well, how could delivery be made to a vacant lot? Messenger boy said there was a man waiting there when he came along looking for the house number. Could the kid describe the man he gave it to? Oh, vaguely. Not enough to help us. Came through at night. The street was dark. Oh, man. My, my car's out this way. Well, how about those two names in the cablegram, Emerson and Monaghan? Anything on those? No, not a buzz. Nobody but those names ever associated with Orlando or his mob. Hmm. Too bad we didn't get our tip a little earlier. If we had, I know you would have stopped it. If he came in by plane, he's probably already cleared. No, I've been watching the planes closely. We fingerprinted a few people we weren't sure of. Orlando will have the same fingerprints he had before. Now, here's the car. Well, unless Orlando's on a boat headed this way, it looks like we're licked. Uh, until we find him, I mean. <laughs> we'll know he's here. Won't be hard to tell. We'll be seeing a lot more newspaper stories about white slavery and dope addiction. That's what we're letting ourselves in for if he gets past us. That's what I hate about it. Oh, come on, George. Come on. Snap out of it. Don't look so glum. More than a week gone by. Liners coming and going. No sign of them. Well, there's still the tramp steamers, George. Excuse me, Mr. Oh, yes. I have those papers ready for signing. No? Which one? Permission for a private ambulance to pick up that polio patient after air rescue service brings her into the team. Oh, yes. What's that about, Chief? Oh, it's a girl stricken with polio on a tramp steamer two days out of Port of New York. Going toward Europe or coming from there? Uh, coming from Europe. Uh, we have a few cases like this every year. If it's serious like this one seems to be, air rescue sends a seaplane out, picks the patient up, and rushes them in for hospitalization. What hospital? Well, that's up to them once we clear them for quick admission. You mean they come right on through without a careful check? Oh, George, you know that. If the passport's clear, of course. If somebody's critically ill, you don't want to make them wade through red tape. Sure, sure, sure. I'm sorry. I just got Orlando on the brain, I guess. <laughs> well, relax. This polio patient's a girl. Hmm. Uh, what is it? I'm just wondering who made the diagnosis. Very few doctors on tramp steamers, Chief. Yeah, very few is right. And very few girls book passage on tramp steamers. Has that pickup been made from the ship, I mean? Yes, sir. I gave a verbal okay to Port of New York about three hours ago. They should be in from the return flight in about a half hour. Where are they landing? Then, that's where the ambulance will be waiting. Mm. You don't want to change the order, do you? Yes. When that rescue plane comes down to the field, have a department doctor there and a department ambulance. That patient ought to be thoroughly checked by us. You sure you want it this way, George? Mm -hmm. I know it won't harm the patient any, but... Uh... The patient is a girl. I know how you feel about it, and if I thought this was a legitimate case, I'd feel the same way. What's the matter? What a strange look, George. I... I just thought of something. Now I know I'm right. Well, if you're that sure, let's have it. That cablegram, remember? It said, um, meet me with Emerson when you get the word. Monon won't do. Well, you know what it means? I know what the names mean. I just remembered. They're both names of respirators for polio victims. Manufacturers' names. Oh. Why, that's right, Mr. Tremaine. I remember seeing them during last year's polio fund drive. They're both excellent respirators, but the Monaghan is a smaller one. It just covers the chest and torso. That's why the cable said it wouldn't do. Orlando wanted the heavy, full-sized Emerson to give him a better cover, a, a better disguise. Call Bennett Field right away, Miss Walsh. Tell our man there to get a departmental doctor on the field and wait for that rescue plane. Arrange transfer to a regular hospital if necessary, but the patient is not to be moved in that private ambulance. Yes, sir. Uh, hiding behind a thing like that. Polio. 
Using sympathy on a machine somebody's life might depend on to get back into the country and do more damage. That takes a real rat, George. Well, isn't that what we've been looking for, Chief? A real rat? New York on extension three, Mr. Tremaine. Oh, thank you. This is it, George. Hello, Tremaine speaking. Ah, good. Fine, keep him there. Yeah, good idea. I'm with that all the way. Goodbye. Well, that's it, fellow. It was Orlando, then. Yeah, it was him. Hale and hearty, too. Well, we're not just going to deport him again, are we? No, not just yet. We figure he's healthy enough to do about another ten years on the rock, just to convince him. Then we'll deport him. Now, can I go home now? <laughs> yes, on the first plane. And uh, thanks, George. It was a good job. Well, that's what I'm paid for. You satisfied? Yeah, yeah. man like Orlando with his mob could cost decent people millions of dollars in cash and, and heartaches. You stop him, and what do you get? No, I never thought about it. No, really, I'd like to know. Oh, I get a lot. Those decent people you spoke about, her friends and neighbors, and my own family, cigarettes, driving my own car, radio, bottle of beer. <laughs> Maybe I've no imagination, but, you know, I, I can't think of anything else I especially want. Can you? No. There isn't anything else. Well... Give my love to Lillian and George Jr., huh? Now, go home. This is Douglas Fairbanks again. The file case of the big sneak completes but another chapter in the distinguished chronicle of our silent men. The special agents of all branches of our federal government who daily risk their lives to protect the lives of all of us. Next week, we will tell you the story of our government's fight against illegal traffic in narcotics in the file case entitled The Empire of Pip the Blind, another venture undertaken for our protection by the silent men. The Silent Men is produced and directed by Warren Lewis. Tonight's case was written by Joel Murkoff and transcribed in Hollywood. All names and places were fictional. Featured in tonight's cast were Georgia Ellis, Bill Conrad, Paul Dubov, Ted DeCorsia, and Ramsey Hill. Douglas Fairbanks may currently be seen starring in Mr. Drake's Duck. Millions of innocent Koreans will die this coming winter unless you give your unneeded clothing today to the American Relief for Korea. That's ARK, A-R-K. Unless there are local collection agencies, please send your used clothing prepaid today to ARK, Oakland, California, or ARK, Mass Beth, Long Island, New York. Listen again next week and every week to other factual cases involving the law enforcement adventures of the special agents of our federal government. For they are the silent men. Now it's the Jubilee Show on NBC.